Welcome to Talk Purpose and Truth with Eden and Kim, shifting you into higher consciousness. The show that elevates, uplifts, and encourages listeners to grow, heal, awaken, and evolve. Eden and Kim include bold topics, special interviews with inspiring guests, intuitive readings, channeled messages from beyond, including celebrities, hot topics to expand your awareness, and time for questions from the audience. Tune in for unprecedented truth, authenticity, on purpose discussions, and magical moments. Yes, and um, you know, when our, our last pod, uh, podcast episode last week, uh, we met that person, Ashley, on Clubhouse, and that's where I found Richie also. <laughs> Clubhouse. Clubhouse. Yeah. But now we're beyond Clubhouse, right? We're definitely beyond. beyond. Y- yeah. Yeah, we're, we're beyond. Okay, so I'm looking... <laughs> I'm, I'm opening up. Oh my gosh, Kim, this is, the bio is gone. <laughs> it's not on here. You know what? Maybe I have it, but maybe we're supposed to, instead of reading his bio, ask him all these intimate questions, but I can find it right now. So okay, that is so Here it is. I got it right here. Richie Jackson, the choreographer and visual director, is the secret weapon behind so many of today's top recording artists. With notable names like Nicki Minaj, Nick Jonas, and Katy Perry under his stylish belt, having worked alongside Lady Gaga since 2008, Jackson served as chief choreographer and visual director on music videos including Poker Face, Paparazzi, Bad Romance, and Telephone, and oversaw her Monster Ball World Tour, Born This Way World Tour, Air Pop World Tour, and most recently, her game-changing Super Bowl halftime show and headlining gig at Coachella. Oh, my God. This Ooh. multi-talented tastemaker danced in commercials for Coca-Cola, Apple, ATT, and shimmied alongside Will Smith in sync, Missy Elliott, and Usher as he moved up the musical ranks, earning a reputation as a force to be reckoned with. And since, I think since this, he's he's also... <laughs> done a star is born so we're we're honored and excited and he is so humble and authentic and amazing and you're gonna all learn so much from him so welcome richie jackson happy to be here (laughs) yeah thank you so much and we we got to know you a little more because we did a reading with you we'll talk about that later but i i feel blessed to know you and we're we're all connected now thank you for having me thank you for having me so yeah. tell us right away, I want to know, how did you get started? I know you have a really interesting story. How did you get started in dance and choreography? So I um, always was dancing since I was three years old. Um, Love music videos, Michael Jackson, Janet Jackson, Madonna, Cher. I mean, you name it. They were a huge pop star. Prince, I loved them and watched them. Um, <laughs> Then my, my mom had a cheerleading squad, so she would always see me dancing at home, and she's like, well, do you want to help me work with the girls? And I was like, yeah. So when I was 13, I was choreographing for my mom's cheerleading team, and they, they literally won locals, they won state, and then they also were supposed to go to nationals in Florida. They couldn't afford it, but with my choreography, they had gotten that far, because I was like, really into like cheerleading and dance and, and watched how they did it and sort of like picked up a lot of knowledge and then you know gave the routine to the girls you know that they can win with so that was amazing um also i was a band geek i was a band nurse i was a drum cat drum major i was in drum line marching band so band and dance was pretty much my background um i then graduated from high school and wanted to go to college so i went to um tuskegee university which is in alabama and I wanted to be a lawyer. I was all about truth and justice and, you know, you do the, you do the crime, you, you know, you do the time. That was my thing. And then mm-hmm. one day, I just saw a good friend of mine who I used to know and dance with. He was dancing with an artist named Malia. And once I saw that music video and I saw that he was dancing, I literally called my mom immediately when it was done and was like, I'm out of here. I am leaving. Oh, my gosh. I'm heading to L.A., and I want to be a dancer. And she was like, well, do you know what it's going to take to get out there? How much money are you going to need? I was like, I don't know what I have to do. I was like, but I do know one thing. I have to leave college now. So wow. I, in the middle of the school year, I had a full scholarship. I left. Uh, I might have saw that video on a Thursday. I was gone on Monday. Just left. Dropped it all. Uh, went back home and worked for about a year and then moved to L.A. 
And once I moved to L.A., I didn't work for the first six months. I didn't know of any dancers, where the dance studios were. It took a long time to really figure out where this community of dancers were located located in L.A. But once I found them, which was in the Valley, like North Hollywood, Universal City area, Studio City, that changed my life. Um, um, the first artist I ever danced with was Will Smith. Uh, then from there, was it was um, Jessica Simpson, it was Miss mm-hmm. Elliott, it was Usher, it was Backstreet Boys, it was in sync. I mean, the list went nice. on. I did a ton of commercials, uh, like you said, Apple, AT&T, Burger King, Mountain Dew. And then I started to assist choreographers. And then after assisting for about 10 years, basically, I started to choreograph. And I worked with Nicki Minaj and Katy Perry, but, but the most loving job ever has been working for Lady Gaga. Just, oh. uh, yes. Yeah. It's been great. I, I love yeah. my, I love my job. I, you you told us a story the other day that I I just find so um, humbling. I guess is about when you got the offer for your job, the job to work for BSB. <laughs> oh, back. and then you yes, tell us tell us that story. So uh, interestingly enough, so. And, you know, as a dancer, if anyone doesn't know out there that's listening or watching, you know, it's hard. You're literally living from check, paycheck to paycheck. And, and these, these gigs don't come, uh, you know, you don't get every job. You have to audition over and over, hoping that you mm-hmm. can great and get, and get the job. So at, at one point, I was called by my agent saying that a specific choreographer wanted me to dance for the Backstreet Boys. And he said, you know, listen, you'd be gone for a year and a half and you'd make $2,500 a week plus per diem. So, you know... What do you want me to tell him? I'm going to tell them yes, right? And I remember saying, saying, saying to him, wait, let me call you back. Let me think about this. And he was like, what? I was like, let me call you back. So I, I took five minutes. And when I called him back, I told him, no, I don't want to go on this. I don't want to do this job. I don't want to go away for a year and a half. And he said, well, why? You have no money. You're broke. I probably had $800 to my bank account. But uh-huh. I, I wanted to stay because I wanted to be a choreographer. I knew I wanted to assist choreographers so I can become a choreographer. Uh, if I had gone away for a year and a half, yes, with the Backstreet Boys, yes, making twenty five hundred dollars a week, I would have come back not knowing anybody, and I would have had to start all mm. over. So I wow. think he hated me. He cussed me out. <laughs> um, but then, <laughs> as I was in an Usher audition, there was another humongous choreographer named Michael Rooney who had done like Kylie Minogue and a ton of eBay commercials. He saw me auditioning for Usher for another job and called my agent and said, I want that guy to uh, assist me as an assistant choreographer. So that was how I got my oh first. Oh my gosh. And that was, what'd you say, a week later? One week later. I yeah. love it. Well, you have, yep. you have a history. I just really have caught on to this, that you have a history of being savvy and intuitive about others paths. Cause from what you told us, the, the story about the ballerina, and, yeah. um, and about your own path, like having this knowing of what to choose and what not to choose. Where yeah. do you think, like, what do you, is there a feeling you get? Is there like a scale? Like, where do you think it comes from? Uh, for me, I would just say, you know, you've always heard that thing when people say like, you know, nothing can stop me. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's more so from a, from a good place, a humble place, but just of a knowing that I can do it too. I, I can get to where I want to be as long as I believe in myself. And, and, and in that moment and in many moments of my career, I've just said I can do it too. I can get there too. And if that door closes, there's a back door. There's a side door. There's another way to get to where I need to get to. I have to just stay focused on you know what I want and what the goal is. And then for me, I have gotten to to do the things that I've wanted just, just with that alone. And sometimes it is scary to let go a job or to say no to things that everyone would just assume that you would say yes to, to get to where I had to be. So it's a, it's the long game. I, you have to just mm-hmm. be in the phone. Yeah. But I yeah. love that. Um, when you told us that story, it just, it, I was so impressed by you and I loved your energy because um, it, it right away, I realized that you're not doing this for the money. You're doing this for your because you're passionate about it. Yes, a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's just. It. I love it. Uh, it has its up and downs, but it is my passion. And and again, it's just. It's what fuels me every day. So. Yeah. Aww, I love it. And it's it's. We talked about self expression the other day. And do you feel this is your perfect self expression? And what do you feel? Why is self-expression so important for people, especially right now? 
Um, I do feel it's my self-expression. Uh, interestingly enough, I was born March 15th, uh, and that particular week in the calendar year is also week of the dancers and dreamers. So mm-hmm. I also feel like I'm actually like in my purpose. Um, I'm in my gift. I feel also why I'm so humble, but I feel like, you know, I, for me, it's actually more than self-expression. I think it's about what I would say to people is like it, everyone I think they should, should find something that they actually love to do. Um, when you find something that you love to do, regardless of the money, I feel like you have a different outlook on life. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like you're, you're more happy because you're doing something that you actually love doing. And so for me, uh, that's what I found is always driven because I just love what I do. I think that if I didn't love doing this, I wouldn't be doing it. Mm-hmm. Well, so you guys, you guys have to, it's so crazy because I happen to have an astrology book right here and it's a birthday book. So I had to open it to you to March 15th to see if it says that. And it actually <laughs> says, it says that you're independent, bold, and decisive right there. Oh, that's him. That's him. And it says, it says actor director and you're a visual director, right? Yes. So right yeah. there. And then it says restless, dismissive, and impatient. That's it. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And you have the same birthday as uh Sylvester Stallone. Work. <laughs> you know what? And he act I I was on the uh set of Demolition Man and he is very much like that. Ah. Okay. Yes. He's and Rocky. Yes. I think Fabio's birthday is also March 15th. Oh, okay. It says, oh. Eva, it says Eva Longoria, too. What? Ooh. I didn't even know that. All right, Eva. Shout out. To- <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Um, okay, so let's get a little deeper now. Um, have there been, I know there has been, but for the audience, challenging times. Can we talk about times that you've had to overcome things throughout your life and are you willing to share some of that? Yeah. Um, oh, God. I mean, so, I mean, the first thing that, that's ever really happened to me was losing my mother. Um, she died when I was 22 in a car accident. So um, I would say prior to that, everything was everything. Uh, things would make me upset easily. Easily, um, I would get attitudes about things that didn't really matter. Uh Everything was everything. Um, but after she passed away and I realized that losing something that meant so much to me, it sort of gave me a different outlook on life. I, I was sort of like the bubble bursted and I started to look at life like, you know, what really matters and what doesn't? What's worth getting upset about and what's not? Uh, it literally changed how I dealt with people uh, personally and in work relationships how I looked at life and, and thought to myself, what is worth, you know, sort of getting upset about and not. Um, and I became more of a de-escalator. I began to think about ways to make situations go away and problems go away as opposed to just being inside them, being wrapped up in it and like pour more fuel on the flame. So it literally let me just be, I became even more humble. Um, and I became less combative and was just always about how do we figure out a way to you know, get out of these situations. I became a, more of a problem solver. I think I was, yeah. not, but it just really pushed me to like far in that corner of problem solver and less yeah. drop. Yeah. And you know uh, a lot about yourself already, but can I bring up our experience with the reading? Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, I think, I, I feel like it helped you to even have a little bit more self-awareness. Yeah. Learning more about, yeah. Tell us what you want to share about what happened in the reading. Um, so <laughs> there were two points that really stuck with me. Uh, one, even when you brought up, you know, socks, yeah. so that hit home with me because, you know, I mean, I'm not sure whoever's watching or listening, you know, if you've lost someone, but when you do lose someone, you know, you live in this world where you, you feel like they can see you or, you know, loved ones are watching you, but you don't really know it's hard. It is a lot of it is faith and you can't touch them or, or smell them or hear them talk to you or see them, obviously. So it, you're, it's a belief. But when Eden and I were on the phone, she <laughs> brought up socks as something that, you know, as a, at least for me, a sign that my mother is close to me and that she watches me still, you know, 
I wear socks all the time. I double sock. Um, <laughs> because I've always had this idea that, you know, no one will ever catch you with bad feet. And so I've always worn double socks. I've been wearing double socks around the house inside my shoes when I'm dancing at rehearsal. I've been doing that for probably like the last, I don't know, I want to say almost 20 years. So you brought up socks. <laughs> I just laughed. I chuckled to myself because that's the furthest thing I thought would ever <laughs> But it let me know that, you know, my mother is watching over me. So that was that was, that was a very special moment to me. Yeah. yeah awesome. I, I just want to say this, uh, that when I do a reading for a someone who's well-known, someone who you could Google and find out all kinds of things, I mean, you could do that with anyone, but especially yeah. someone in uh, your industry and in the entertainment industry. And I always have the intention of bringing up something that is so personal so that you it, it could be something you cannot Google. So yeah. that was, there were a few things that you couldn't Google that there's no way I could have known. And I, I like she, to make sure. She you with the song. That was another one. She saw you listening to her song. Yeah, and there's the other moment was um, you brought the color yellow. Yes. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh. And so there's this song by NDRE called Yellow that I listen to, you know, often a lot. Um, and when I listen to the song, it's actually a love song, but when I listen to it, I actually think about my mother. Um, I, I don't know. It, it's just a song that whenever it comes on or whenever I play it, I just think about her and I's relationship. And the song was about, like, it's called Yellow because it's about, you know, staying with someone you're with in the yellow, the yellow being a happy place. So whenever mm. I record, I mean, or whenever I play it, I only think of her. And yeah. when you brought up the, the color yellow, it's like, that's just so crazy. And also, one other thing we touched on, when you said there's a space that I always go to. Yeah. Um, I uh, either pray or have deep thoughts. Yeah. Today, I, I realize where that place is. Okay. It's, it's the shower. Ah. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's the shower. Like, when I've been to the shower, like, literally, that's the only time that I can't answer the phone. Mm -hmm. I can't get a phone call. I can't send an email. I can't check, you know, any social media. Yeah. I'm in the shower, and that's actually where I have deep thought. So, wow. yeah. That's so true, too. Like, that you have, or anybody who's is when you're when you're in the shower or the bath, you're disconnected. Yeah, 100%. yeah, yeah. Well, that's funny because it reminds me of, of last week's guest, Ashley Nance. She told me that she tells her yoga clients to take a deep breath on the toilet because that's when you can remember to take those deep breaths. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when you're <So>. still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, well, again, thank you, thank you for letting me do a reading for you, and yeah. it was it was a blast. You're, it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I want to know um, how did you feel? Do you feel like right now you're your most authentic self so far? Because we're always growing. Yeah. And, and and in the industry, how do you stay true to yourself? So I learned that lesson probably. I want to say two years into being into L.A., um, for me as a dancer, choreographer, especially when I was coming in as a dancer, you know, when you first get into a new industry, you kind of watch and see what everyone's doing, and then you try to figure out if that works for you or not. And some, most people that I've seen in L.A., they sort of go with the, they go with the flow. Um, it really wasn't working for me. I wasn't auditioning well. I wasn't being myself. I wasn't dressing like myself. And what happened was one day I said, you know what, Richard, what you have to do with the pretend you're at the clubs again. So I used to always go out to the clubs when I was back in the Bay Area or, or San Francisco. And I would wear my button-up shirt and my jean jacket and my, you know, big jean, baggy jean pants and my boots. And that was like the, the sort of vibe. Every mm -hmm. time I, when I got to LA, it was always about, always about like hoodies and sweatsuits when you were trying to audition. So one day I said, you know what? Get dressed up, go get a haircut. You're going to the club for this audition. Like put on your jean jacket, mm -hmm your button-up shirt, your, your baggy pants, and the boots. And I once I started to do that and feel that vibe and, and sort of like harken back to who I truly was before I got to L.A., mm -hmm. in my life around. I, I began mm -hmm. to work jobs. Uh, I would stand out. It would be 95 degrees outside, and people would dress for the weather. But I didn't dress for the weather. I dressed for the audition. I dressed. Mm -hmm. so all that to say is, yes, from the from the, those moments, early moments on, I've always remained true to myself, authentic to myself. I feel like in a city like LA, that's your best bet. 
you know, you sort of yeah. want going on, but the more you stay true to yourself, that's actually what people are looking for, especially in my industry. So I'm a hundred percent. For more information on Eden, go to EdenSuston.com. For more information on Kim, go to KimLifeCoach.com. Make sure to follow them on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Talk Purpose and Truth Podcast. If you loved this episode, you'll love every episode. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Thank you for listening.